Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're at the workbench here. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to replace your battery and adjust your SD card in the Gemini. And we are going to talk about how to uh, manage the SD card inside of the hand controller. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to change the battery on the Gemini 2 Mini. It's actually very straightforward. There's a lot of misinformation. I think it's from older videos and approaches, but for the Gemini 2 Mini, this is the easy way you do it. First, you have uh, your hex wrench. I'm gonna put the size uh, in the video here in the description. We're going to remove uh, the four screws on each corner. Okay, and of course you wanna make sure the thing is powered off and not plugged into any sort of uh, power. Should have mentioned that before. So to pry this up, I just use a little flathead screwdriver. I wanna be careful not to jam it into anything. Just pops right out and put that over here. And here's what we're gonna see. We are gonna see the battery and the SD card. So let's do the battery first. Um, there's a little clip on the side here. So what you're gonna do is just kind of pull it back or sometimes what I do is just pull this back and just hold it upside down and the battery will come right out. Well, maybe not right out, but oh, there we go. So it pops right out. Okay, so we'll put that away. So one thing I like to do before I put in the new battery is I like to just double check the tension on the contacts for the battery. If the battery is not well tensioned and it, it maintains that connection, you could have things like loss settings, things like that. And we don't, of course don't want that to happen. So what I like to do is just using a flathead is I just gently bend this uh, side one in just a hair. You wanna be careful to be very, very gentle with it because otherwise you might break it off. And then just kind of dipping my uh, screwdriver beneath the bottom one just a little bit up. Make sure to get both of those tines in there. So now I'm gonna take the new battery the plus side is on the uh, top, and we're just gonna slide that in like this until it pops into place. That's all there is to do in terms of uh, changing the battery out. The next thing I wanna demonstrate is how to reseat the SD card. So the SD card is right here. It's a micro SD card. It's typically somewhere between two and eight gigabytes. Um, the size doesn't really matter. The amount of size that's actually used is, is a fraction. It's a very, very small percentage of what the card is actually capable of, but don't worry if you have a two gig or an eight gig or, or something else. So the way this works is, uh, and I'm just gonna, usually I use my, my fingers, but I got big fingers, so you can't really tell. So I'm just gonna use this screwdriver to demonstrate. But use your fingers, okay? Cause you don't wanna accidentally like jam this into something and, and break something. So the first thing that you do is you push the little uh, holder back and it's gonna snap in out. And then you are going to just flop it open. And there is the SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take that out, just to demonstrate, here's the SD card. When you put it back in, you're going to see that there is a little small divot right in here, and that there's a little small notch that that goes into. Now, of course, you're going to line up uh, the uh, SD card connectors with the connectors that are actually in uh, the SD card holder. So when you pop this back in, you wanna make sure, of course, that the, uh, the connectors are aligned, but the important thing is that little notch on the side is correctly oriented. So now, again, using your hands, but not the screwdriver. Screwdriver is just for demonstration so you can see what's going on. I am going to flop this back over, and then I'm going to hold this down, and I'm going to push this forward to lock it back into place. You should hear a little click. One last thing I like to do is just to make sure that it's correctly seated is just kind of push it a little bit on the end. Uh, you'll notice it kind of moved back just a hair. Well, that's a good thing to see. And that lets me know that the SD card is correctly and firmly seated. So now all we need to do is we need to put back the cover, just pop this back onto place. Whoops, got this sideways here. Okay, and I kind of like, I think the USB-A is kind of a, I like to, to lean it in there and kind of pop it on there and then just kind of move it around a little bit until everything fits. There we go, kind of snaps into place. And then just go ahead and put back the screws. There we go. And as you're pushing this down, you'll probably find that it kind of snaps back more into place. Everything should be flat. Okay, and we are done. 
So when you put this back onto your mount, the thing you wanna make sure of is to reset to HGM defaults. That's an option that's available in the hand controller. And then you're gonna to wanna to re-enter all your information. If you don't wanna do that, you can also save the parameters using the hand controller, and I'll put the description of how to do that or where that is on the hand controller menu in the description of this video. But you wanna make sure to save that, and then when you re-attach this to the mount, uh, you still wanna reset HGM defaults, and then you can just load those parameters. And again, we'll put that in the description of how to do that uh, in the video here. The next thing I want to demonstrate is how to either replace or reseat the SD card in the hand controller. So obviously we have it disconnected here. We're going to turn over the hand controller and we are going to, using a Phillips head screwdriver, we are going to just remove the four screws on the corners and pop the front of this box off. So now we are going to turn this over and we're going to pop this open. So what you'll see in here is there are two boards. The top board is essentially the controller for the touchscreen and the bottom is the actual computer for the hand controller. And not many people know this, but this is actually, the hand controller is actually a computer itself and it's a client to the Gemini. So it has its own processor, it has its own memory, it has its own program it runs and then it connects into the Gemini that controls things. So you'll notice along here, hopefully you can see this, that there is a rather large a set of pins that connects the two boards together. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the screws on the top board so that we can remove that because we need to get beneath it. Now we are going to gently rock this back and forth. Move this a little bit. Uh, kind of tough to do, but you want to be very, very careful. Also, be careful of the uh, ribbon cable here. You don't want to break it or snag it in any way. So we're just going to kind of gently move this back and forth. There we go. And it pops right off. So the SD card for the hand controller is located right here along the side. If it looks very similar to the one in the Gemini, it's because it's exactly the same. Uh, so again, what we're going to do, you want to use your fingers, but I'm going to demonstrate uh, just with the uh, screwdriver because I don't want my hands to get in the way. But it's going to be the same process. So we're going to push this down to unlock it. Oops. Uh, and we're going to flip it open. Here's the card. I'm going to take it out. Uh, there we go. And again, you will see uh, there is the pins on the card and the pins in the controller and that same notch. So um, if for some reason that you have knocked your hand controller around and it's come loose, we're just gonna open this back up and we're going to take the card out and then we're going to reseat it using the same process we did before, lining up that side pin. Then we are going to once again flip over the holder and while holding it down, just kind of slide it into place. You should feel it click. And again, what I like to do is just make sure, give it a little bit of bump, make sure it's in there uh, so that uh, the card is seated and secure in there. So now to put it back together, we just reverse what we did. We want to be very careful to align these pins uh, with the board on the bottom. Otherwise, it's just not going to work, of course. So we want to be very, very careful, making sure that they are correctly lined up. Uh, and just kind of push it gently on both sides until it's firmly seated. You'll know it's firmly seated because it goes all the way down and the board on the top will hit those posts for the screws. And now we're gonna put the screws back in. Okay, and we're done with that. And we are going to now reattach uh, the top, or just at least place the top on. And turning it over, we are going to reattach the screws into the corners. Now you don't want these screws on the corners to be as tight as possible. You want it to be snug, but not overly tightened. Otherwise, the potential is that the gasket on the front will push onto the hand controller screen and cause it to think that you're constantly pushing down. And of course, we don't want it to do that. So if you find after you set it up uh, that the screen is unresponsive, you definitely want to make sure to check uh, the corner screws and make sure they're not too tight.
Okay, and now that they are tight, we can go ahead and reassemble everything and get the hand controller and the Gemini back up and running on the mount, and you should be in good shape. One thing I do want to point out about the hand controller is it does not have its own battery. It's actually powered from the cord that goes to the Gemini. So the Gemini provides power to the hand controller. No batteries to replace in there. 